everybody welcome back to another kicks over coffee episode where we have casual casual conversations about the footwear industry things are going on um issues challenges lots of challenges right now but also lots of opportunities um and i'm joined by uh michael shu uh who is with uh 4d shoe tech did i get that right 4d shoe right. tech 4d shoe tech all right Michael has been in the industry for many, many years uh, and, and once led a uh, multi-million dollar shoe company himself um, and has uh, over time moved towards, you know, what we are in now, the digital future. And 4D Shoe Tech really is about helping brands digitize uh, their current operations. And so, Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So, Let's talk a bit because I think one of the biggest challenges right now is if we're looking at 3D design and CAD design and, and kind of digital twins and digitization and all those things, we've had a few leaders in the industry. Uh, we've we've mm -hmm. seen Deckers and Wolverine and obviously like a Nike and Adidas and Columbia and a few others, but it's been really a handful of people who've invested in this and really moved towards that direction. Now, all of a sudden, you have shoe brands who obviously want to start getting involved with software, but sometimes that can take several years to master certain programs and certain, certain aspects. So what, what exactly are you guys providing? Because I think it's unique in the fact that if somebody wanted to digitize, they could use you as a, I don't know if it's a proper term, but CAD lab or something like that would, would apply. Well, what we call ourselves is, a, is simply just a digital sample studio, you know, built for the future. Basically all your digital development design needs we can do them end to end because obviously I come from shoes. My other partner comes from shoes as well. And, and our third co-founder, he's a technology guy. So we're just marrying the best of both worlds to do that. Yeah. So what kind of, so when you, when you say you're a digital stew shoe, uh, shoe studio, in essence, what, what kind of services are you helping provide? Where's the, where's the friction for brands and where's your, where's the solution or the value add that you're giving them right now? I think most of the frictions come from, obviously, you just mentioned it, buying the software and hiring the people to kind of be on these type of uh, big investments, if you will. I mean, if you look at it, most of these CAT software out there is just step one, because once you get that bill, it's the plain vanilla looking kind of 3D structure. And then take it to the next level is well, what if I want this material on this? How can I get that done? Well, guess what? Now you're stuck because you don't have the know-how of the people able to do that. Guess what? We have that in-house. And then after you get that in, it takes it to the next level where you've got to take your 3D to the next dimension, which is why we call it 4D. It's, it's this hyper-realism that you have. So, so it's, if you will, it looks almost like a deep fake. It, it's, a, it's a real thing, but it was never made and, and no physical samples or or, or anybody had to work over time or, or any, you know, any materials were wasted in the process. That's yeah, how it so, so in essence, you know, I, I think sometimes people want to bite off more than they can chew and they want to take mm -hmm. the whole apple on. But for you guys, it could be as simple as a brand saying, we want to dip our toe in this digital future really quickly. And they could work with you to try to at least take a couple of their product lines and start to see what you can do with them and digitize them. And then, as you say, when you start to get those 3D assets, all of a sudden you can start putting those online and allowing people to spin. So all of a sudden you have an experience in retail exactly. uh, on e-commerce that you, you wouldn't have normally from a physical sample that you have to take a picture of a million times and post up there, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah. So what, what, are, what are some of the steps or what are some of the processes that you guys use if a, if a brand came to you from scratch and said, I, you know, I want to digitize some of our offerings because I think it will really help lower costs and get us faster speed. So uh, I've got a designer, they've got a sketch. Do they just give you the sketch and what, what, where does it go from there? Yeah, this is how it typically works. It, it would be very similar to the old traditional way of doing it. You give me the tech pack, you give me the sketch and you tell me what the dimensions are obviously because even in, in the digital world without the correct accurate dimensions, we couldn't give you something you know, that never existed before. So we need all that still. So a tech pack is still very key, very important. And your input in the whole process as well, because we need to take that interpret it into a digital world and we need to retain your design uh, intent and your creativity as part of the process as well. Right. But then once you have that and once you've created that for them, then all of a sudden the tech pack becomes something 
so much better for the production, right? The, the fact exactly. that it understands better what you're looking for. They have the dimensions. That's the benefit of a CAD. They have all the patterns that you actually want. So it actually increases not only the speed because maybe you don't have to go through so many sample sessions, right? It starts exactly. to off those processes. Yeah, and, and I think you touched upon a good point. This is what I call design for manufacturability. That's where it comes in, where when you're designing now, you're taking all the production feasibility and all the challenges that you would have down the road for manufacturing into that process. So once it's done, the single source of truth is there where the data can go everywhere, anywhere it needs. And whoever gets, you know, the touch point is the person who's looking at that point will know exactly to the, you know, half a million millimeter, one millimeter of where everything needs to go. So again, it's that design for manufacturability kind of, um, process. Yeah, that's a good point because I, I mean, as much as we talk about digitization, I've seen factories make far faster advances than some brands uh, mm -hmm. at doing this. The last time I was in a factory, uh, we were walking through and there was a guy scanning lasts into the digital format and there were more computers in a factory than I've ever seen before. Um, so it's almost like, you know, those, so a lot of the high-end factories are already speaking, I guess, this language of CADs and 3D and they they're not foreign to when they get this, they know exactly what it is. And they probably really appreciate the fact that they don't have to do it themselves, uh, that they have experts that are kind of kind of an in-between doing that for folks. But um, what, um, what are some other things that you've heard from brands right now? Or what are some other challenges that you've seen that you guys are trying to solve with, with brands in this new environment? I think uh, obviously that's an easy answer where remote working, right, uh -huh. is, is a big one. And because of what we do, um, it, you know, it, it's perfect for this environment. I don't want to say it's a perfect situation we want to be in, and we never want to be in this type of crisis, but because of the way we're set up is digital, it's remote, and it, it, it's about online collaboration. So wherever you are, anywhere, anytime, you can jump on it and work on it. Um, and, and that brings us to a point where that's part of the, the challenge is that a lot of brands and retailer, retailers are saying, well, this is great, but how do I get people to communicate and collaborate more seamlessly and more timely? And, and that's something now that we're working on beyond this digital sample studio for the future. We're building it to be a, a smart, you know, AI powered and also this online collaboration kind of platform that we're building on. So probably in the middle of this year, down the road this year, we'll have something out that takes all that into effect. So it creates this platform that allows a brand, a retailer, or if you're a startup or independent uh, designer to go on there and to, to kind of really design and detail things in that, what I call 4D visualization. So it's not something where, you know, you're working in an engineering based kind of CAD program or simply just scanning a material in there to look at it. It's now really how a designer, how a developer works in their normal, typical day-to-day -day workflow. Right. And I, I think it's an important point, too, because when we talk about synchronization, you know, the traditional way of doing things was we'd, we'd make a lot of samples, we'd fly all our salespeople in, we'd have line reviews for day mm -hmm. one in, check the box for that one, not that one, not this one. And all of a sudden, you can't have anybody fly in um, to do that. Uh, you know, Zoom can, Zoom can help. But honestly, if you had a 3D file that everybody looked at together and could swirl around 360, zoom in, zoom out, to get the exact, you know, the exact understanding of the shoe itself, all of a sudden you have a really important tool that is not only cutting cost in your operations, but it's creating that remote efficiencies where people can have those inputs and you can automatically do an adjustment and within a day, right? You could probably have the adjustment to relook at Correct. it. Or right away. I mean, in some cases, depending on the, the complication that, you know, in terms of the design or, or what it is that you want to do. Um, I'll show you in a little bit, you know, in, in a brief kind of overview of what we do in the PowerPoint, you'll see that, that on that platform, you're easily to drag and drop these material balls to, to change up the materials and to see, you know, really your design vision right. in front of you. So you don't have to try to explain to someone or try to sketch something out, you know, use all these different references. It's all right there. Right. Go ahead. You can go ahead yeah. and bring that up and take a look at it sure. if you want to, just so people can get an understanding right off the bat of what we're talking about when we talk about uh, kind of the software and uh, the ability to, to take a look at things. All right. 
So this is um, what we're all about. And the next phase of it, which we're working on right now, we're testing out with some of our VIP clients, is gonna be AI power, it's gonna be deep learning, it's gonna be computer vision. And what that means is that, you know, there are trends out there, materials that you wanna use, and as a designer, you have certain habits. Well, guess what, we marry all that with the uh, data we collect and we can make some predictions and recommendations based on all that, either based on a trend or based on something that sold really well last year, or as a designer, you're looking to do this. Uh, kind of like, you know, in PowerPoint, there's these design, smart designs that right. popped up, right? So that's something we're working on, combining AI, deep learning, and computer vision where, you know, you could scan in a, a material or a shoe and it'll, it'll search within the database um, to give you something very similar. Very cool. So this is what, you know, again, we already went through that. So we empower for designers and developers, allowing you to ideate, prototype, and showcase your divine design vision in photo photorealistic digital 3D. I call that 4D, but I had to, describe it this way because people don't understand what 4D is. Right. And, and the good thing is you never have to make a physical sample if you don't want to. We're not saying we're gonna take out that whole process, but it complements that. And it could cut down 20, 30, 40, 50% of your sampling needs. And that's great also for sustainability purposes. Right. And there are three of us, uh, three co-founders, two of us come from shoes. One of us is a technologist and we're a tech company, but footwear is in our DNA, basically. And I will go over really quick a, a project we worked on for Walmart. This is for confidentiality purposes. I can't you know, tell you who it is, but it's one of Walmart's key footwear manufacturing partners. And the goal was to kind of implement best practices to help grow their business with Walmart and to deploy this kind of digital business transformation initiative. Mm -hmm. So that aligns with the, the, the strategy of Walmart. And, and need, they needed us to implement this so it's faster, better, and it's more sustainable. Right. And we're able to do that obviously because of the expertise, the scale that we do, because we, all we do is this, footwear, digital development, end to end. And we're able to do this in, from sketch or an idea to physical sample in five days. And I'm gonna show you how that was done right here. So it started with this, as you were talking about earlier, this is just kind of a, a simple uh, sketch, sample request, a little bit of tech pack in there. And then from there, we were able to create this thing that, you know, you can see spinning right here. This right. was never made. So we made this first using, utilizing a 3D CAD uh, model. Then we digitized, digitalized the, the material and then we made it 4D, very hyper real uh, photorealistic effect. And then from there, we took the materials that the, the developer and designer specify using AI files, Adobe Illustrator, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we print it onto a digital printing um, kind of machine and process. So really taking it digital. And then from there, we took the 3D and turned it into a 2D paper pattern, plotting and cutting. And then there it goes. At the end of it, we get a shoe like this using this process. So even including this bottom right here, because we built the CAD model with the upper and the bottom, and we have the capability of printing these ourselves because we have 3D printing farm mm -hmm. in China. Um, and we're able to do this, so we did this in five days. So that outsole that you see right there uses the CAD model we generated, and it's a soft, flexible outsole. So all we needed, obviously, and, and we had in the very beginning a, a last from the uh, manufacturer, and from there, as you can see, sketch a sample in five days. Right, and if somebody wanted to make an adjustment, as you said previously, the designer would just get on there and make a few adjustments and then you just reprint what you needed to reprint, correct? Exactly, exactly. And I'll show you a little bit of preview what I was talking about earlier, what we're working on right now is, is this right here, this platform where, you know, the same shoe, you put it on here and you can drag and drop the material ball on here to start 4D sampling. And then from there, it becomes in the future and an AI driven type of process where it knows your habit, it, is no, it knows the, the type of segment, the type of target market you're going after and the type of trends you're looking for. And you, it'll just do this on its own automatically or you can do this on your own as well. Very cool. And as you can see right here, the next step after that is, well, okay, this is great. Now why, why I wanna show it to my customer? Well, here's your showroom right here. here and you can even host now a virtual trade show on here where 
everything is in 3D. I mean, it's not like no one's done this before, but to do it in 3D, do it in that 4D effect, right. I don't think I've seen anybody really do it the way that we've done. That's great. Yeah, I think that, I mean, that everybody right now is trying to figure out how they do their, do their virtual showroom. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. very timely now to figure that out because I think, you know, even if we go back to, and I obviously will go back to at some point, an unknown time, but when we go back to meeting face to face again, uh, it won't be the same way where we bring in a pad and a pen. It'll be a hybrid where we use a, a platform like this to, to increase the efficiencies of those face to faces. Yeah. And you'll see a lot of platforms already that allow and enable collaboration, but they just can't handle this type of photo realistic 4d kind of, you know, assets. So, so that, that's why, you know, we're here to, to, to help everyone, you know, to, to help you with a pilot program, to help you take on a whole, you know, suite of solutions that we can implement. We're here to help. And we, we've done now a little bit as well, because what we've done is interesting that we recently signed on a, a global lifestyle brand and they, they also have a handbag division mm -hmm. and here comes handbag. They, there was a request for us, but we started kind of dabbling with that as well. Great. Cool. Uh, well, it's super cool to see that. And I think it's a great service to have for someone who wants to dip their toe in, but, but may not have budget to hire CAD experts or may not have budget to, uh, or, or even have the time to like retrain people and they want to speed up really quickly. And, and I do think that people can just start off with one SKU or two or whatever, and just start to, to try these, as you say, like a pilot program, yep. um, to see how that happens. So, uh, you know, I think that's, that's something that's, uh, um, something that's super cool. And, you know, when we're looking for these really quick tools to, to skill up really quickly, it seems like a, a lab that like, like you guys, uh, have is something that's a, a great option for people to, to consider. No, that's for sure. And we've worked with, you know, these big box retailers, fast fashion brands down to a, a startup. I mean, there was someone we've been working with for a month or two now. And, and he comes from one of these big brands that we all know out there. And, and he's starting up a new brand in this environment. And he told me, you know what, people think he's crazy, but he, he feels like this is the best time to do it. Plus now that we've connected. So we really kind of help each other out in, in this whole process. Awesome. Well, uh, again, uh, Michael, thanks for coming on kicks over coffee. I'd be remiss to, ask you about your coffee habits. If you have coffee habits before we leave. There you go. There you All go. Right. You got ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should say Michael is working nights because of his team in China. So he's in the U S but he's, he's on a, he's on the Chinese schedule to, to sync up with their lab over there as they, they do all this, all the work for the. the and, and sometimes European because you have clients over there. So I, I don't know what time zone I'm in anymore. <laughs> Co coffee is definitely a needed part of your day. Just like most of us. So that's great. exactly, exactly. All right, folks. Uh, this is a quick hit uh, kicks over coffee. Just taking a look at uh, digital solutions right now in an age of remote work and um, you know, trying to use tech tools to synchronize, uh, there's also options where if you want to do something really quickly, there's a there's a really cool lab that can help you test out and and see the future in real time and speed things up and lower your costs in this environment. So, um, if you guys want to connect with uh, with Michael, you can just shoot me an email and I'll connect you with him uh, at uh, apolk at fda.org. Um, but until next time, please keep wearing kicks and please keep drinking the coffee. Thank you. Thank you.